Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to walk through setting up Shopify Lite or Shopify Starter on your site. So first, let's take a look at how I would set up your individual Show It account. So this is not one of your templates. This is what your website would look like. Um, the homepage and about pages and all of those pages can really be set up however you want to set them up. Um, but you're going to want to have a page that is probably called Shop. And then in this page... You want to make sure that you have something that is a list of your products. So right here, this could be a list of all of our different templates. Right now, I have it looking like it's for guides, but we could say um, the show it designs. And then we could start giving each of these a name. So template name here and another template here third template here. You could give each one of these a description. And then we need to create buttons. I'm going to make these bigger that go to each of our individual product pages. And so within show it, we have, we're going to want to make a product page. So this would be kind of like I showed you in the last lesson, like our product pages where you have the title and the price and all of the details you can introduce people to show it and add testimonials if you have any. Um, you can add related products and so on. Um, so let's pretend that I'm going to name my product. Let me think of a beach. Um, well, let me go to some of my exi existing ones. Let's do Cape Town. So I'm going to name it Cape Town. And then if I had another, another template called Barcelona, I would want to duplicate this page and rename it Barcelona. Barcelona. And then let's say that I had a third one named Palm Springs. So duplicate this Palm Springs. And we want to have a duplicated page for every single one of our templates. Then we would come back to our shop and we'll call this Cape Town. Call this one Barcelona. We can call this one Palm Springs. And I could reduce the sizing here. And then I'd probably want to click on the button text, the name, and my image text. And you would replace this with one of your product images and set a click action that takes this to oh, this is our Cape Town page, our Cape Town page. And then I'm going to click on all of these and I'm going to take someone to the Barcelona page. And I'm going to click on all of the Palm Springs elements and I would take someone to the Palm Springs page. So Palm Springs. And I would continue to do that for all of my different products. If you're going to do it this way, I think it's probably going to be easiest for you if you keep each row of products in its own canvas. So within this canvas, you'll see I have a title and then I have my three products and then I have three more products right here. And that's because as you add new products to your lineup, if you wanted to put them at the top of the page, you're going to have to manually shuffle everything around. And so it can kind of get tedious to move all of those pieces manually. And so that's one of the reasons why when your shop gets big enough, I think it's easiest to take it over to WooCommerce because all of these products when manually link to their individual product pages. And those product pages would not need to be recreated by you every single time. You could add a product in WordPress, kind of like you would add a blog post, and it's automatically going to feed in here. But for now, let's go to one of our product pages. So here's Cape Down. I'm going to scroll to the top. And I have this button right here. And I could either, well, there are two things that I could do with the button. I could embed a button directly from Shopify or I could take this to a Shopify cart page. I'm going to show you how to do both of those. So first, we're going to want to sign up for Shopify. So let's come down here. And I'm going to scroll down because I don't need the main version of Shopify. I need, let me see if I can invite it. Uh, let's go to pricing. I need this starter plan. So let's click on learn more. And we'll get started for free. We'll give them my email. So once we log into our site or create an account, we can start to customize our products. So let me see.
see if I actually have any products in here. I do not. So we would start by adding in a product. So I'm going to add a product. We'll call this Barcelona. And you could give a short description right here. This isn't actually going to appear on your website. So I think that it's optional. Let's see. We will make this an online store. It might be checked by default. Um, we'll make it an active product unless we want it to be a draft. If you wanted to add any images to your product, you could do that here. I think it would be a good idea to add one like main product image. So let's go to my desktop and see what I have. I have this designer collection guide and like I could do something like this. And I think this shows up when you're in, when someone is in checkout or when it's on the cart system, which I'll, I'll show you that in a second. Um, and I think it could just be good to have one here, but, but you don't have to fill every single thing out here because it's actually going to be on show it. And we really just need to create our cart button. We want to do our price so we can make this $4.99. I'm not going to charge tax on it. Um, that might vary depending on your state. So look up those rules and regulations. I don't need to track the quantity. It is not a physical product, so I don't need to have any, um, any shipping. If we had variations, so like if you had um, like multiple versions of your product, so like one for photographers, one for designers, you could add that in here and we could say, we could choose style. We could do like photographers or photographer version, designer version. Um, and that would show up in our cart. Let's see. But they could vary in price. If one is more expensive, if one is less expensive, you could add your variation images in there too. And let's make sure I filled everything else out. So online shop. If we wanted to give it a category, we could. I don't know if that is necessary. You probably don't need any of these. And just make sure that I have everything. Barcelona, category, check inventory. Okay, so I'm going to hit save. Shopify is pretty basic right out of the box. So in order to do digital downloads, we have to add an app. So let's come down here and we're going to add an app and let's see, let's go to Shopify app store and we are searching for the digital downloads app. So let's do digital downloads and I'm going to search and we want the one that is from Shopify. This free one right here. And you can, and you know that it's right when you say that the developer is Shopify. You might end up getting one of the more premium apps depending on what you need it for. But for now, I think that this is a, a good starting point. So we're going to install this. And then once we have that, we can, it'll show us our products and we can click on add digital files. So this is where we could add a PDF, like the PDF that I showed you before with our download directions. So. I think I have one in my desktop. Yeah, I have one right here. And so I could just upload that PDF um, and I could do a different one right here for the photographer version. And I could do uh, another file right here for the designer version. And then I would hit save. And then the next thing that we need to do is add another app in order to do buy buttons. So let's go back to apps and we will go to all recommended apps and then the Shopify app store. And we need to do the buy button. The buy button channel. I'm going to click on this. Again, we're looking to make sure that the developer is Shopify. And then we're going to install. We want to allow all of this. And I'm going to hit install. And then once that's loaded, we'll have another menu item over here on the left. And we're going to create a buy button for each of our products. So I'm going to click on create buy button. We'll do this one. You select the individual product that you're making a button for. And you'll have to do one for every product that you have in your shop. And we'll hit save. And we have a few different variation styles that we can choose from. You could do something like this, which is probably the biggest and bulky version. Um, we could change whether we're showing 
Um, we could change where, whether we show all variations or just one variation. And so that would add the drop down. And we can change whether we want it to be just a button with the, the drop down link or if we want it to be like a bigger product listing. If I'm adding this to a Shopify, if I'm adding this to a show it site, I normally opt for the most simple version. And then you have some op options that you can adjust to when somebody clicks on your cart. So when somebody clicks add to cart, it can add something to the cart. It could take somebody directly to the checkout, or it could open up a button like this where you see more details. Um, when we had this on our site, I used the add product to cart button and that automatically adds the cart right here, which I think is kind of a nice feature if somebody is price shopping and maybe adding multiple things to their cart while they're considering. I know that's something I do when I'm shopping. So I like to have that cart button. You can adjust some of the styles in here. So if we didn't want it to have rounded corners, if we want it to be a wider button, we could add in our brand colors and change the background color and the font color. And then there are a few different fonts in here that we could choose from. So let's say that I want it to be Railway Bold as my button text. Once I have Fortimated, once I have formatted my button, next I'm going to copy the code. So I'll click on next and I'm going to copy this code right here. And then I'm going to come back to show it. And I'm going to just hide this button for now. And I'm going to go to embed code and I'm going to paste this embed code into the box right here and click save. It's probably going to take a second um, to show up, but then we can see I'm going to hide this purchase note too, but then we'll see that our button is right here. And if I preview it and I scroll down, you can see that we have the option to add a different version to our cart and we can add on to our cart. And then it shows up over here on the right. And then somebody could go through the checkout process right here. This store would have to have all of the e-commerce sections set up in order to actually take orders. So that's gonna be in our, let's see, I think in our storefront, so, or in our settings, sorry. It's been a while since I did this. So we'd have to go through and probably add our plan. Um, so instead of having the starter trial, I think we'd actually have to be paying for it. We'd need to set up all of our billing. We'd need to set up our payments. So. In here, you can walk through their steps to add PayPal. I think adding Stripe is also typically typically a good idea because I or you could do Shopify payments too, um, because those tend to make them really seamless. You, and then there are different Shopify methods that you could go through and add depending on how you want to take payments. Um, you also might need to go in and add, and then you can also go in and customize the checkouts. And if you want to take gift cards, you could turn that on here. Um, and there are all sorts of different things in here that you can customize to make sure that your storefront is easy for people to check out from. If you've never taken online payments before, if somebody's checking out from PayPal, that will go to your PayPal account. So you want to make sure that you have a business PayPal account set up. And then every so often you can go in and transfer that money to your bank account. And then if you have Stripe or Shopify payments, uh, well, I know that Stripe every so often. And then if you have Stripe, you'll want to make a Stripe account. And then from there, the Stripe money can be fed into your bank account. And that happens automatically every few days. And I think that Shopify payments is going to be the, the same. I actually have not I actually have never received Shopify payments. I think they added that after we had left Shopify. One thing to know about Shopify is that you can only embed one of these buttons on a page at a time. So if I wanted to had, have one right here, I could not also have one right here. So let's see. If I hit preview, one of them is going to work or they're both going to show up stacked right there. A way to get around that if I wanted to have buttons throughout this page to take people to the checkout would be to take people up to this canvas where my checkout button is. So I'll show you that. I'm going to X that button and copy it and I'll leave this cart system right here. 
and I can paste, uh, I can shorten this box and I can paste this right here. And then this canvas, the, where the button is, is called details. And I can click on this configure link and go to canvas and take them to the details page. And so if I preview this here, sorry, sorry, the details canvas, it'll take me up here and then somebody could go through the checkout process. And I don't want to get too in the weeds as far as Shopify goes, because I think that all of you are probably going to have different situations and different things that you want to do. Um, but one thing that you might want to look into, let's see if I can find it on here, is adding. But I'm, in, I'm going to include a link to this article right here, which is also going to show you how to do direct cart links. Um, if you have an active plan on Shopify and you have everything published and set up, you can add direct links to your products. So if you didn't want to do the embedded button, you could do these direct links. And if you're doing those, you can do things like adding an odd discount code. So let's say you're having a Black Friday sale and you don't want people to have to worry about adding in their discount code at checkout. You could add the discount code to the end of the permalink and then that's going to auto apply to at checkout. We used to do that when we had Shopify sometimes and we had big sales because sometimes people forget about the codes or they miss what they are. And, and adding these codes saved a lot of time, but this is like more in the advanced part of having a store. And so I definitely don't think it's necessary if you're just getting started. I think the biggest thing if you're just getting started is to get your buttons embedded and then make everything live and start driving traffic to your site. So if you have any questions about adding Shopify, drop them below and I will do my best to answer um, or find the right answer for you guys.